Huh, we're finally good. The rest of the day passes uneventfully, and this time, I'm able to appreciate that it does. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry, so I stay for a while. We're feeling we'll be covered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, that's so I don't have to deal with a crowd deal with a crowding in the hallway. Oh, the music, whatever. I don't know if Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind talking to someone from another class. Shizune signing so fast her hands make noises like swords cutting kind of through the air. We should is desperately trying to ke keep up, but it's clear she can barely she can, she can barely even manage to understand her. I put my head down. Whatever dis whatever they're discussing looks like serious business, probably way over my head. Not just that, but she's and also seems very angry. Although it could just be our normal severity making it appear so. Choosing a science to the point where her wrists crackle and Misha suggests to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters. And on top of that, she has to sign, every sign back everything the other girl does. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finish. They soon finish, and the girls sit down in their seats again. I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. Festival, festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after class, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Tuesday starts signing at me. Misha, Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs of, kind of harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her sinking into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. Well, we're, the, we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. Sarcasm? Huh? The tone of Shizune's actions make me think she is speaking with disdain, but Misha interprets it normally, replacing whatever intent may have been there with their own chipper twists and things. It's so disorienting. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Never mind. Okay, for how could I forget? If you're trying to get me to join at least twice a day. But he, John, some could say the work is too much. It'd be nice if students were to show a little more support for the, their leadership. Some appreciation to the ones who are working so hard to make it all possible. Maybe, for example, a little help. Not asking too much, is it? Yep. Help would be appreciated from students like you. It's just, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily refuse it, so it would be nice if someone would. Oh, hello. I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing the Linkwood again? Hanako blushes hard and meets a straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Shizune stares at her own pro her own problem, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped around the edge of the door. 
Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. And they seem to have momentarily forgotten about trying to get me to stay for the rest of the day. What is it, Hanako? Uh, has, has Lily been here? Sorry, Sato is not here. She, uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps, Hanako, Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Chuzune, who stares back at her for her, her casual, studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Chuzune is going to look away, and she isn't timidic enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It's a little funny, though, watching Hanako's reaction to Chuzune's normal behavior. This is what happens at two PO different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? If there's any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on fest the, their festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? She might be slacking off somewhere, just like Hee-chan. Damn, what is it with she's an air need to point out stuff like this? Hanako nods quickly and retreats with haste. What were we talking about? Oh yeah. We were really working hard to make the festival happen. And driving other people insane along the way. Well, good luck with that. I stand up to leave, making my exit before either of them, either of them managed to bear at me anymore for slacking off. Pierce the Hamulus. Yes, Arceus Drago. We will channel our inner, our, our inner communal and pierce the heavens with our drills. The halls are somewhat quiet, as expected. Everyone must be in club meetings or festival preparations, or both. Just nice words about being a slacker echo in my head. I feel a bit guilty. I feel a bit guilty about not contributing, but I seem to lack the resolve to do something concrete about the matter. For the festival, it's too late already, as I count, count, count helping Shuzune and Misha, which I naturally don't, and clubs? I don't know. Maybe I'm not a club type of person. Halfway, th halfway through the, halfway through, halfway through the way from the school building to the dorms, I spot a figure on the front of the door. In the front of the dorms, it's Rin. She looks like she's working on her mural today too. I walk over. I walk over to her, but she doesn't seem to be notice me approaching. She's sitting on an upturned box, looking intently at the wall she's painting with a brush held between her toes. The mural has progressed considerably since yesterday, but it's still only half done as far as I can tell. More colors have appeared, and twisted human-like figures have spread and increased in number. I have to say, the style is quite eye-catching and unique. Not that I would be knowledgeable about art by, about art by, by any measurable scale, but it's quite nice looking. I clear my throat to get her attention, but not startle her so her concentration will break, won't break. Wait. She doesn't even turn to check who it is. I'll wait. Well, I think we've managed to get the Rin routes, guy. Rin's route, guys. We did it. We successfully managed to piss off Shuzune and Lily enough where we're just hanging out with Rin. Fifteen minutes later, I said that her concentration is in un is undeed and broken, and also that I have waited long enough to warrant poking her gently on the shoulder to remind her of my presence. Ren turns her head mechanically to my direction, and I keep staring at my crotch level. Oh, it's he, Sal. She can she can tell. I feel a lot less uncomfortable <laughs> if she would look at my face. <laughs> An astute observation. Hard at work, I see. The conversation starts if I hadn't been here for a quarter of an hour already. But it's not a concern. At least it starts. Oh, uh, welcome, uh, Peach. We've, uh, we're just playing some Kadawa Shoujo, conversing with Rin. Nothing that amazing or interesting yet. Looking good. It does. The layer of paint and hiding other layers of paint, mixing and shaping the human figures, really creates an impressive look. But Rin looks miffled. Miffed. 
You should have comment on comment on works in progress. Seven years of bad luck. Sounds terrible. I guess I'll take it back then. Still, it looks good. I wonder if I I get fourteen years of bad luck for thinking that. Rin turns back to look at her painting and pokes it with a with a big toe. Could you mix some of this color? I'm running out of it. She looks down down at a half half empty bowl with the remains of some pinkish paint in it. I didn't really intend to stay and help her with this project though. I guess I didn't intend to do anything. Oh. Welcome, PSS56. Uh, we're playing some more Kitao Shoujo, as you can tell. I look at Rin. She looks emptily back at me. Just this once. Rin picks up another brush and drenches it in another tone of pale red. There are dozens of similar bowls all around her working area. From the looks of this scene, she could have been sitting here for hours. I wonder if she has. That would mean she had been skipping school, though. Which, of course, why well, I wouldn't put beyond someone like Rin. I pour a little bit of white and red into the bowl, trying to match the color of the one already on the wall. I can't seem to get it right. It's really inconvenient of her not to mix it up in the first place. Getting it to be as exactly the same tone would be impossible, but at least I can try to get it as close as I can. Speaking of hard work, isn't that a huge workload workload for you too? It's such a big painting and all, well, you know. If ads are bothering you, upgrade to Twitch Turbo, you know? Okay, no, I'll stop. <laughs> oh, I'm not only bitter enough to think like that. I guess you aren't. You guessed right. Legs hurt, though. They feel like slugs. Slugs made of sea slugs. Because of the position? Yeah, I like doing it in a horizontal position more, if you know what I'm talking about. But it can't be helped. Can't ask the wall to lay down. Saying that, she stretches herself a little, bending her legs back. Back far more than a human be human should flex. It's, it's astonishing how effortlessly she man man manages her body around. There's a small flinch in her otherwise blank expression. A hint of pain, maybe, as she stretches out her calves. Rin must have stamina, dexterity far above a normal person to be able to live like like live like she does, but she's wearing out working like this. Why do you, why push yourself so much? Take a break or something at least. Continue tomorrow if it's that bad. This gives her a pause. A long one too. I feel like a mental yawn. I don't think so, he so. I'm not pushing myself. Sure, it looks like you are. No, it's not about pushing or pulling or anything related to that kind of thing. There is this boy. A boy? Yes. Where? At the art club. And? He is blind. Oh, now you do paint if you're blind. No idea. Oh, that's a very good question. How exactly do you paint if you can't exactly see what you are painting? So, why is he there? That's the point. He is there. She should really speak more than one word at a time to make this feel more like a discussion and less like an interrogation. You can't really do anything that you'd call art, right? But he comes there anyway, and paints. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know, that's why I asked. So, well, this is getting very uh, very philosophical very fast. He isn't paid often, but I think his paintings are very interesting. I'm sure they are. I once tried that, painting with eyes closed. It wasn't too interesting, and like cleaning up the floor took ages. She didn't try again. But he's becoming better at sculpting. I see. Maybe she's trying to make a point with this. Maybe she forgot she had one. Does it seem like the art club is full of interesting people? Not really. Pretty blunt statement, and she totally missed sarcasm. No? 
Just like I said, they're not very interesting. I usually don't have much interest in people who are not interesting. Maybe you have. Maybe. But that boy is interesting. Maybe I am like that boy. Or maybe you are. Maybe everyone is. Doing things you can't do just because you can. That's pretty deep, I think. And tell that to her. You're a deep one. Nah, I'm a really shallow, shallow and thoughtless person. People say that to me all the time. Did you know I can only think four things at the same time? No, no, but I do now. Right now, I'm thinking of the second floor girl's toilet, ice cream flavored ice cream, the middle toe, and a haircut. I'm going to need a haircut. She shakes her head around vigorously, letting her short and messy hair ruffle wildly around. I can see that doing it, doing it is something she likes to do. Well, um, this game has a great animation budget, I can tell. We fall silent as Rin treads around absentmindedly, poking some brushes around. The thought about the art clip sticks in my head for a while longer. I'm feeling like I'm treading on very unknown territory of art. The way these meetings of Rin go, it's as though I'm starting a smoking habit or something. I should probably stop talking with her. It's not like I dislike her, despite the confusion her confusion her being herself causes. I don't like dislike art either. I've even drawn for, I've even drawn for fun sometimes. I just don't have real creative drive or any technical skill. So usually, if I were to draw something, I get white paper syndrome and just freeze completely. Like 7.8 out of 10, too much art, am I right? Or that, or that, I manage to draw something completely disfigured and promptly get frustrated at my own inability to put the picture in my head down on the paper, and then call it quits without even trying to make an effort. Rin clearly doesn't have this problem, but she frustrates me in another way. Being with her is like looking into a mirror that doesn't reflect anything. It makes, it makes one question the sanity of the act. Rin sits down in her box. Swaying from side to side, apparently uncomfortable with the uncomfortable silence. She is staring at me again, or maybe over my shoulder. I can't quite figure out where her eyes are focused on. I'm thinking of leaving so she can carry on working undistracted, and that I can do whatever I'm going to do alone. It's not like I have anything that must be done today. Oh, shoot. Who? Oh, nobody. I just tried to tell Hanako that Lily was looking for her. Do you know her from my class? Oh, her, the mystery toilet girl. That person is funny. I started going to the toilet five times during one reset, recess three years ago. <laughs> Not three weeks ago. I'm sure it's a world record. It was very mysterious. That's why you call her, call her mystery toilet girl? What other, reason, what other reason could there possibly be? What if there is, it's an eternal mystery. I didn't follow her in there. Maybe it was the week before that? Could have been. Looking at her makes me hungry. Don't say that. At least, not around her. Rin, tur Rin turns to look at me blankly, as if she's not sure why I reproved, reproved her. But she doesn't acknowledge understanding any more than before, so I give up at this point. So, do you want to go eat dinner then? No, not yet. Rin has turned her hungry gaze back to the wall, looking slightly more energetic, or at least slightly less lethargic than she did before. It's as if the wall is an opponent, and she has to and she has to vanquish it, something she must overcome before she can indulge in dinner. The feeling I get, this is the feeling I get, a weird sense of empathy overcomes me and makes me smile a little to myself. For all her oddity, Rin is pretty cool after all. I'll be going anyway. Have fun. Rin has already grasped a brush and is dripping it into fresh paint, so of course she can't hear me anymore, or doesn't answer anything even if she does. I'm feeling tired, so I set my alarm clock to wake me up as late as I can afford while still making it to the first class. The nurse's voice is almost nagging, nagging in the back of my head for about morning jogs. I make a resolution to make up for it by going for a walk after school tomorrow. Emmy won't care either way, I bet. Alright, so, um, I think because we got that scene with Rin instead of, like, the scene with the Hanako and Lily or the scene of, uh, the student council, I think this is, I think that means we will get her out, which is 
pretty good, I guess. I wake up and take a hot shower. Oh man, more Kenji? Oh no, nope, no more Kenji. Back in my room, the first thing I see is the familiar roll of medication bottles lined up on lined up on top of my dresser, and it makes me depressed as usual. It's annoying. I thought it was okay. I thought I had made my peace with this thing, got on over it. But what I really did, I allowed myself to forget about forget that I have a problem. Being here really reminds me of the reality reality and trying to fight against it hurts. Reflecting on it is only gonna do so much. I've done this before for months. It seems like it's it seems like it's time to get over it. If allowing myself to forget that my life is definitely not going to be as long as those of others, I won't get anywhere. My life may be different from others, but it's a life in progress. And that's how I rationalize it. I down the usual handful of pills trying to push the sudden dreary feeling out of my head, then prepare to head out to class early as usual. I step into the hallway. I notice Kenji coming around the corner, stealthily making his way to his own room with a large bag. As he sneaks past me soundlessly and like a ninja hiding in plain sight, I call out to him. Hey! Oh no, what have you done? What have you done, Hisao? Why would you provoke him? He jumps at the sound of my voice. Oh, hey man. I didn't notice you there. I'm really tired. We just need some uh, some yen for a pizza you can have. And uh, I will not be... P oh, well, does he pay us back? Uh, maybe he will pay us back, you know? I, I, I doubt he will, but he might. Let's see. Oh, hey, man. I didn't notice you there. I'm really tired. I think it's more like he didn't... He, did, he didn't see me, but that's not the issue. Where have you been this early? Shopping? Nah, I wasn't shopping. Sometimes I have to visit the math teacher. Yeah, I figured it'd be a good idea to find out when the next exam is, since he tells you in advance if you want. So then, uh, what's in the bag? I thought I'd go shopping while I was outside. I need supplies to continue the fight against the vast feminist conspiracy. Uh, okay. I thought you didn't go outside. I wear a hat now. I decided not to point out he is not wearing a hat. An awkward silence settles between us, and then Kenji breaks it by pushing his door open slowly, releasing a creaking sound in the air that only makes the moment seem more awkward. He sets down the bag inside his room and then closes the door. I'm surprised you went on your way to find out a test date. Trying to take advantage of an opportunity to study is pretty, it's pretty diligent. I would not be surprised if he had just his dead women in the bag. I never study. Oh. I just want to know when the next te next test day was. I'm still gonna take it, though. I just need to know so so I know what day I can af I can't afford to skip class. He usually sends out updates on that crap by phone, so I had to step out and check up on it. And why do you have to go out when you can get it on your phone? I don't carry a phone. What do you mean, don't carry a phone? You mean you just leave it at home? Nah, I don't use phones. I don't have a phone. Phones? I have no phone. Why don't you have a phone? How can you not have a phone? No phone at all? No phone? I just don't like phones. Actually, I'm kind of scared of them. I don't know why. I think it's just kind of repressed trauma. Yes. He has a very, he has a very dark past where his parents were killed by phones. But basically, when I hear a phone, I get nervous. It's my darkest secret. I have two theories on it. Either I have some fear of receiving some undefined, ominous, life-altering doom call, or it's beating on a phone in the past. Beating so badly I can't remember it. Beating in the head. Maybe his hat, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's like transparent. You, know, you can't see his hat, but it's there. Beating in the head. Well, where else could get people a phone that make me unable to remember it? The ass? Unexpectedly logical. I feel very, very depressed now since this conversation is more or less over. Can his door again appears to head inside? Yeah, I'm going to sleep, dude. Have a good one. Class is gonna start in like 20 minutes. I already did something today. Too tired to go to school. Hey, you need some lip balm? I actually bought two because I thought the store had started selling individual AA batteries. <laughs> what? 
Thanks, but no thanks. Whatever, man. You know, actually, Kenji, yeah, he looks kind of like Harry Potter. Like his scarf, you know, like he got like the Gryffindor colors going on. He swiftly enters his lair, finally letting me go to class. For a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to morning class. Instead, almost everyone seems to be here to get, oh, here already. I recognize most of my class by their faces now, though their names do escape me. Oh, is there still the um? So the guy who seems like he was dying. The class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the, into the rhythm of school. I've even said stopped worrying when taking notes and being overly attended. The first day it says pretty high strung in class. Muto finishes a lecture about electricity early, but continues without a pause about the festival. So, as you know, the festival is on the day after tomorrow. I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also come Sunday, please keep the meaning of this festival in your minds. Games and fried food! Everyone bursts out in laughter, and so do I. Oh, yo, Misha. Yes, thank you, Mikado. But what I meant to... The bell cuts him off. The remainder of his sentence is buried with it beneath the ring of the lunch bells, and everyone starts packing their bat, packing their things. Muto de Buno de 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 Muto deliberates for a moment, but since nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. It's crowded in the hallway, or as crowded as hallways in the school probably get. Most of the students seem to be heading down for the cafeteria. He sell. I'm gonna make you a one-time only super extra lunch special offer. Emmy, Emmy's homemade lunch boxes and the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. Her overly, flirt, her overly flirtatious sales pitch echoes in the hallway. A, multiple, a remarkable feat since it's full of people. Amy strikes a very confident looking pose as though as an attempt to one-up her own ridiculousness, pumping her his name is called the Mato. Me I swear to God, it's moving. Puffing his her very honest chest and making a V for victory sign with her own hand. Sounds delicious. Do what? Do I owe this honor of being invited? Well, yes. I'll keep in mind the pronunciation of your science teacher's name from now on. You stood there looking really lost and sad, so I thought you could use some company. This is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. So how about it? You're probably really no lonely and would eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Eh? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sure, I'll have your lunch offer. Uh, with pleasure. Let's go to the roof. The roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. And if I don't get up there, she'll probably wander off. Then I'll, And then I know she'll go hungry because she never packs a lunch for herself. Who will? Oh, Everett's favorite game, the pronoun game. Come with me. Without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arms and drags me through the hallways. I attempt to make conversation on the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Amy, Emmy smiles guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. I slipped in a run at lunch and forgot to eat it. Huh? The stairway to the roof is a little dil dil dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. It's just like the roof, like, like only the main characters ever go to the roof, like, you know. Like, no one else knows what the roof, if the roof exists, only the main character does. At the top of the stairs is a door complete with missing padlock. I wonder who this interpid, in who the interp inter intrepid individual was that removed the lock. Emmy shoves the door open and steps beaming into the sunlight. Suddenly, a tall, dark stranger appears out of nowhere, standing imposingly in front of us. Emmy flinches back, almost falling back down the stairs. Eek! Hello! Yipes, you scared me, Rin. Wait, isn't she? It's Kenji. You know, Kenji, you know, got his arms chopped off, and now it's Kenji. 
Well, Kenji got involved in a tragic, uh, a tragic fight with the the feminist conspiracy, and he lost his arms. Hello. Noticing that Rin is speaking to me, Amity looks curiously at me. You two know each other? I look confusedly at Emmy. She is that friend of yours? Rin has turned her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't, I didn't know you knew this person, Emmy. The awkward silence lasts for only a few moments until Emmy lets out a tiny giggle, shrugging off the coincidence. I invited Heath Sal for lunch. If you know him, that's just better. Oh my. This way I don't play the pronoun game, you know? Why can't Emmy just tell you that uh, she knows Rin? You don't have to like, you know, play this dumb pronoun game, saying she and her. Oh, does that mean I don't get food, or did you invite him for lunch without the lunch? Yes, you know, he got... The feminist conspiracy forced him to join their ranks. Er, um, neither. I have food for three. Nice thinking. They walked to the other end of the roof while I stayed at the clock tower for a while, taking in the atmosphere. There is no one else but us here. I guess the roof is not as popular as it is in other schools. A few run-down benches and tables are scattered under the edges. Persap pers perhaps in an effort to... Persap... No, oh, what the god. Perhaps in an effort to attempt to make the roof look less desolate. The small pebbles covering the roof rattle beneath our feet. I peek through the chain-link fence to take a look at, at the school grounds and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the quid oh god, go back, Qua quadrangle and at, at the cafeteria, quadrangle and at the cafeteria. A few delivery trucks are driving past the school towards a convenience store nearby. Somehow a watchdog barks at a passerby. Somehow when I look towards the town center, the small town feel strikes me very strongly, almost palpably, palpably. The hectic, lifestyle, the hectic lifestyle of big metropolises seems so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run to catch a bus like their life depended on it, or get their senses overloaded by neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine, looking at my new hometown, even if, even if it's only going to be mine for one short year. Fighting about my illness and having, mo having to move away from home all came so suddenly I haven't had time to think about how I feel about it. When I step out of the shadow of the clock tower to open, I feel warmth touching my feel of warmth touching my back. The sun shines through a perfectly clear cerulean sky. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries a scent of trees and flowers, not smog and car exhaust like it used to just a few weeks ago. Emmy settles on a bench with Rin in tow and produces one bag with two small lunches bustless with two small lunch boxes from her bag. Come on, Isao, what are you waiting for? She's beckoning me, beckoning me to join them, making room on the already small bench. I seat myself on the corner of the bench to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Emmy suppresses a giggle and places a lunchbox in front of Rin and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go, lunch is promised. Homemade, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. Thanks, I make them myself when I can. Conversation dies off as I'm about to set about as I said about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Rin deftly opening the lunchbox and popping a fork full of food into her mouth and using only her feet. Even though I've seen it before, I can't help but be impressed at her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I am in right now. Will I ever get used to such sights? Did you get used to sights such as this? I can't decide if getting used to such a thing would be a good thing or a bad thing either. Does getting used to this place mean I, that, I'm gi that I'm giving up on being a normal person? Or does it just mean I'm becoming more and more understanding about those around me? I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. You seem pretty hungry. Emmy looks up, mouth half full, and swallows before nodding. More morning run always works up an appetite. 
which is great because I burn through lunch pretty quickly. How else do we keep my girlish figure? What would happen if you lose it? Would you become a man? I very nearly choke on my lunch trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech. Does your figure have to run in the morning too? Do you always talk like this? Talk like what? Like what? I think that answers my question. Er, never mind. So, uh... I struggled to think of small talk and sent on the obvious question. How did you two meet? Rin seems content to let Emmy answer this question. Someone in the housing department thought we'd compliment each other well, so we're assigned rooms next to each other. Compliment each other? Like shoes in a suit. Huh? Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together and we got out all our limbs, get it? Ah. So I started helping Rin get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. Yeah, so. Wait, well, how do their commercials always go? It's like, oh, it's like. You're not. Oh, I can't remember. It's like, you're not yourself. You're not yourself when you're hungry or something. So, like, uh, whatever. I don't know what am I talking about. I see. Red chooses this moment to interject. I have trouble with shirts. Right, that seems fairly obvious. Really? Kind of? This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. That, combined with the fact that Rin is genuinely curious, makes me feel slightly better and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms. So, uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be... difficult. You know what, I'm going to just stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. Good idea, he said. Red nods and what I suspect is meant to be in a sage manner. I see. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. It's really quite good. Emmy Flat finishes her lunch first and makes a contented noise. Oh, that was good. As she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Sorry. With a flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a tree of juice boxes. She tosses me one that appears to be cranberry juice, one to Rin that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk, complete with pink color scheme, and an equally and it and keeps an equally equally pink box some kind of fruit punch for herself. Rin dexterously dexterously stretches, stabs her straw through the top of her box, and begins to drink. I'm once again impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. Somehow I don't think e either Emmy or Rin are the sorts of people to think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Rin especially so. Oh, hello, ho, hello, Ice, Ice JJ Fish. Uh, welcome to the stream. We're playing some Katawa Shoujo, and we're doing Rin's route, I believe. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not so sure. So, hey, Sal, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like high places, for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch, too. Emmy gives a thousand watt grin. Pleased by my response, I suppose. No problem. Feel free to eat with us next time too, okay? I won't make you a lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service. I don't know. Emmy looks more looks mock offended. Trying to take advantage of my good nature? The nerve. She giggles. Well, that's her answer. I guess Rin and I will keep eating lunch all alone. I'm suddenly assaulted by the most heart-rending puppy dog eyes I've ever seen as Emmy pouts. Kidding, I was... I was kidding. I'd love to eat lunch up here again. Wait. 
is Ice is Ice JJ Fish some kind of musician? I don't know. Maybe I should. Oh, nice Illuminati profile picture. Good location and the company is okay too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declar declar let the oh my god. The talking is hard. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. I guess this makes us friends now. Or at least acquaintances. Lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. Rin, you didn't finish your lunch again. I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat anymore, you're gonna fade away. No, oh, you make. You make music. Oh, that's nice, so. Oh. Maybe, maybe so. Do you have a, like links? Do you, do you have like a SoundCloud or something I could listen to? If you don't eat more, you're gonna fade away. Rin shrugs as as if this is an acceptable risk. Come, we better get going. The best, the best top, the best top. Let's make a pause on this and check it out. All right. Ice. Oh, what's it? Uh, Ice JJ Fish. Oh, oh man. Is this where all like the mixtape memes came from? <laughs> Some way I feel like it is. Come on, we better get going. The three of us head down the stairs together. Yes, my name is Jeremy. The three of us head down the stairs together. The, th the afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself what I planned for something to do after school. So I head to the library to run a couple of books I finished reading. Walking inside, I see that there are many as about as many students here as there were on Tuesday. All the more evident from the almost total silence enveloping the room. As I drop the books they borrow into the return slots in the mixed state, Yuko suddenly pops up from behind it, quite startled from the banking they make as they hit the trolley next to her. Ah, oh, sorry, Yuko. Didn't mean to startle you. No, no. That's fine. It happens. A lot. I'm used to it by now. Um, can I help you? It's okay. I think I know where everything is. Thanks, anyways. Oh, is your is your mixtape straight fire? Is you have a do is dank mixtapes? I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do, and after reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's become a hard habit to break. I wander down the fiction section towards the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. As I do, I look over the corner where Hanako had been the last time I was here. Not really expecting anything to come of it. So, what's that one website? It's like a clever bot, right? What happens if you ask like a clever bot to buy your mixtape? I, I, I'm curious what it would say. Surprisingly, though, she's not there. Oh, co absorbed completely in a fairly thick book, I decide against intruding on her like last time and get back to finding reading material. After an in indiscernible amount of time spent pursuing the aisles, I finally decided on a couple of books to get, and to get and slide them off the shelf. With a minimal fuss, I quickly walk over to the counter, tuck up my books, and pop them into my bag as I walk out. By the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. I guess I need to buy some supplies. I can't live off cafeteria food and eating out for my entire stay here. As I leave for the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try and stave off the tiredness that has accumulated over the weeks. Hey. As I leave for the... Uh, did you watch it? 
I don't know, PS. I say you pass it. Oh, I'd be fine with modding you. Let me let me quick do that real quick. Did you watch the? Have I watched the Fifty Shades of Grey music? The <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey movie? No, I uh, have not. I cannot say I have watched it. I'm uh, not. I, I'm not sure how uh, if uh, if I really have a. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going into that. After passing Thorn Brown in the corner, though, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards the small town below. The color of her hair and tapping of her cane are unmistakable. I quickly walk up to her, but she seems to catch her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily. She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head. I to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. It's more like a porno. Let's, let's, see, what, let's see what rating he has in IMDb. It's a 4.2 out of 10 on IMDb. Oh man. You sell? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a good memory for voices. The fact she actually remembered is a pleasant surprise. Good evening, what brings you here? Once again, she gives a small, polite bow, and once again, I reply in kind before realizing that, that I, sh I needn't do so. Just going into town? You? My, my, what a coincidence. Doing the same thing, eh? Doing the same thing, eh? Are we Canadian now? Hmm, I usually go shopping on Fridays. He pauses for a moment, but suddenly looking, like, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanukkah usually comes into town with me. Ah, uh, not lost, but worried. The two, st the two do seem to keep pretty close tabs on me. Tabs on, oh, not on me, on one another. It's kind of surprising that Hanukkah would just forget Lily like that. I noticed her reading in the library. She probably just got caught up in a book. She lets out a small sigh of relief. Thank you. She has a habit of doing that. Avid reader? Right, she doesn't like being around crowds of people, so reading away from everyone lets her relax a bit. Although she probably didn't intend it, I can't help but grimace and re as I recall my first meeting with her. Hardly wanted to bring it up, I remained silent as we quietly will continue to walk down this, this silent road. Tack, 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 tack. With the road, the road barefoot of cars and students of Yamaku increasingly far behind us, the quiet rustling of leaves and the measured tapping of Lily's cane against the sidewalk are all that can be heard. It's kind of nice, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of where I used to live. Before I know it, I've relaxed, relaxed so much that a loud yawn escapes before I can control it. Tired? Yeah, I've been running ragged these past few days. That's an understatement, to be sure. Transferring into a different school would be bad enough, but nothing like this. Well, hopefully everything should settle down for you. The festival's got everyone in a spin right now. And even pl plopped right down, right in the middle of things. For a moment I hesitated, but given her apparent tolerance or frankness, I decided to give my full thoughts. I guess Yamaku is a bit different though, I mean, the formality surrounding everything and the isolation of it, not to mention the most obvious difference. It's kind of a whole different mindset. I suppose I got used to it though in time. She gives a matter of fact nod, apparently pleased with my answer. It feels almost as if she just, she's included me in the flock of students she's shepherding, along with class three two in Hanako. Well, not that I mind. It's nice to get off to get the thoughts off my chest. In any case, looking on the bright side, one can see the chance for a new beginning. You should cherish the ability to make new friends. That's optimistic. Never, nonetheless, it's good to have a positive attitude about such things. I suppose. I guess that's a good that's a good take on it. 
Walking on the road, she seems to become somewhat unsettled. Before I can ask what's in her mind, she collects herself and speaks up about something else. So, where in town are you going to? Actually, a pretty good question. I come in to buy food, but the layout of the place is still pretty foreign to me. I just intend to wander around and see what I could find, but with the sunset already approaching and nightfall not too far away, it doesn't seem very wise. I am going to go ask her for ask her for directions again. I was going to get some food, but now that you mention, I really don't know the way. Well, now this is quite lucky. I was just about to go to the convenience store myself. Looks like yeah, I'll be in your care again. Thanks. Together we walk to the store. The store. My pace is carefully slow to remain beside her. Compared to my usual walking pace, this is quite slower, but that's not without reason. Oh, I think that it's a decent point now to end off the stream for today. We and uh, tomorrow we will. We uh, eh, man, I'll play through this scene. We'll do this scene first, real quick. After what couldn't be more than a few several minutes, I catch sight of her objective. This town is really pretty small. Without further ado, we make our way inside from a greeting from the counter. Mind if I tag along with you? Usually Hanukkah would help me, but seeing as she's not here, it takes a moment before I realize what she means. Considering she wouldn't be able to read any of the labels, shopping without any help would be a big pain for her. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. I grabbed two well-used baskets from a small rack as the entrance, handing one to Lily. Well, well we are still going to finish this convenience store, and then we will be, then we'll be done, though. She lays on the ground, putting her school bag in, retracting her cane, and sliding it through the basket's handles while picking it back up in her right hand. Wait, if she doesn't use her cane... Before I can complete the thought, she comes beside me and pitches the cuff of my uniform in her slender fingers. Is this alright? Ah, uh, sure. I have no reason not to accept. I can think of worse things than shopping with a pretty girl holding on to me, even if, it's, even if it's out of necessity. We navigate our way through the store with not one of the occasional passing customers seeming to bat an eyelid. Considering how close Yamaku is, I guess seeing students from there must be entirely normal for the local residents. As we reach each aisle, I quickly check with Lily and find out what she needs. I grab, grab the long of what I'm looking for and put her items into their respective baskets. I guess this is the same routine she and Hanako follow every Friday. Right, all that's left is the bread. That should be that, and then that my shopping should be done. Do you need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go then. With a quick side trip to the bakery section, we make our way to the registers. The line, thankfully, is almost non-existent. It's not. It's not long before we both paid for our food and out the and are out the door. I'm actually told that our convenience stores in Japan are actually quite nice. As they were tracer cane, it extends to full length. I waste a minute looking upward at the night sky while holding both our bags. For a moment, I try to make the cl make clouds make clouds of my breath, but the summer heat doesn't seem to cooperate. Eventually, she writes herself, taking a quick stretch before taking her bag and leaving me to my two. You tired as well? The festival preparations have been complete chaos. Tuesday, breathing down my neck doesn't exactly help things either. Hey, she's only trying to get everything organized. Better now than later, right? I suppose. I'm going to enjoy relaxing in town tomorrow, that's for sure. That's a, it's much better Lily hold on to us than uh, Kenji. I fairly certain that I picked a dating sim, not a Nodem game. We walk out into the quiet streets, talking between ourselves as we carry our bags of food and supplies from the store. Wait, what's that? I notice a very distinctive figure making its way towards us, silhouetted by the street lamps. Looks like I think it's another male student from my class, but as he... Or should I say, she gets closer, I recognize her quickly. Rin, what are you doing out here so late? Oh well. <laughs> it was probably, I don't know, I guess so. Uh, I, you know, before. I guess I'll leave you all with the, the, the suspense of this conversation of Rin, and I'll end the stream off for him. I'll end the stream off here. It's a bit unfortunate, but. 
Oh, I gotta apologize. So this is probably an awful time to leave off, but uh, thank all if you're watching. Go, oh, I'll see you all here, back again at should somewhere around nine o'clock. Sorry, this room was a bit late today, but thanks.